Good evening, you guys. This is Carolyn Muncy from Ransom Relics. Uh, and we are live on the Prima redesign page. And I hope that you join me. We have been working all week on this armoire, this 1920s um, Art Deco type armoire. And those of you who have followed us, and maybe some of you are new and you haven't seen this series. So you can go back to Monday and you can watch each night where we have added little bits to this armoire. As you jump on here, uh, please tell me where you're from. Even if you're watching on replay, tell me where you're from. And uh, we are going to kind of recap what we've done a little bit. So here is this Art Deco armoire. I didn't show you guys on the inside of this piece. There's a little knob here and it comes out and you've got these, it, it even has right here, it has hats, shirts, pajamas, and underwear for those little, um, on the little shelves right there. Let's see, can you guys see those shelves? Isn't that cute? And then it's also got a hanger, so you can hang clothes in this, or whoever would purchase it or want, they could also add shelving in there, which would make a great display item in like a boutique or something like that. I think it would be just adorable. And I always forget how it pushes in. So you can see that we've taken just, um, it was total wood just like this and I painted it all black. And then I added the artwork on top of it. And um, hi Lydia, how are you sweetie? And uh, as you come on, tell me where you're from. This is the bottom of her dress and she's got bushes around her. And then she's got this moon uh, that surrounds her. But when you look at Art Deco pieces, so many of them have this implement behind um, the lady or the gentleman that are on there. Good evening, Wanda. So glad that you are watching. And uh, so we've taken just a plain on wire and we've embellished it. And uh, the sides, let me turn this around so you can kind of see what we did on the sides might be easier for me to move my camera a little bit. So you can kind of see, we implemented a little bit on this side and brought interest over here. And then down here, we've just got just some bushes. I didn't want it too, too, too busy. Um, I can do that real easily because I get carried away painting and I can make things a little too busy. And I didn't want to do that. And so tonight, I wanted to talk to you a little bit before we get started about using your Prima molds. And I got, I'm sorry, you guys, my stupid thing is really stupid. And I keep saying that every night, but I promise I'm gonna get them fixed. Um, but molds are an intricate tool that you can use when you are trying to make something uh, that is plain maybe and you want to add some some detail to it we all know that when you buy a piece that's very very ornate number one you're going to pay more for it aren't you number two some of the ornateness you don't necessarily care for but it's on there right so um i think that these tools of any tool this is my personal opinion now, I love all the tools. I love the transfers. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love everything that Prima does. I love the paints. I love everything. But the one thing that I think is a tool that needs to be in every furniture artist arsenal, honestly, uh, uh, even sometimes even above transfers, but that's my personal opinion. Now, some people just, they, you know, well, it's just all good, isn't it? But let me tell you this. When you get a mold, you have something that, number one, you can use over and over and over again. It's not like you're buying something and you get to use it one time. Uh, that's the beauty of the molds is, is they're re, re reproducible, right? 
So, um, I love the molds. I try to get as many, as many as I can because I never know what piece is going to need a little bit of help, right? So tonight, I'm going to um, show you what we're going to do on this piece, and you can probably see right here, I've got a little bit of a mold right here, and it goes all the way around, and we're gonna apply it up to the top. On this particular piece, I like it because this here, you know, you've got this level, and then it comes up here to this level, and it drops down maybe about an inch where the doors are. So to me, that was just something that I could showcase you know, and, and bring a little more interest into this piece. Even though I don't want to do a ton, uh, just that little bit sometimes can be just enough, can it? And it can just kind of bring that product up a little bit. So when I am making molds, and let me see, I thought I had, oh yeah, there it is. So when I am making molds, um, what I needed out of this piece was this mold here. This is what we're using tonight. And it is the uh, Ajidar Patterns um, from Prima. And I just wanted this pattern because I felt like both of these were uh, very nice as far as Art Deco, and they're small. They're smaller. They're not a really, really wide pattern. So I love those. So if you use resin, let's talk about what to use when you're making your molds. Um, if I'm doing a piece that I want precision on, let's say I want the uh, mold to really stick out and to be precise so that you can see it. And you know what, you guys, let me, my uh, thing fell out for my battery and I better put that back in or I will lose you in just a couple minutes because my battery's low, so let me plug that in. Okay. So if I don't, um, I want, if I want precision, then I am going to use the molds that um, are with resin because resin, when you use resin, I remember when I first started using resin, you guys, it scared the fire out of me. I thought, oh, you mix that chemical and boy, you know, that's just kind of scary, but it really isn't. Once you do it once, you're hooked. And I love the precision that you get on the molds. Uh, and this one, I actually have the, uh, we're going to be applying some of this, but um, it's actually got the gold uh, eternal on top of it to bring out all of those details. I painted them black. You can see right there, I painted it black. And then I'll do eternal wax over top of it. And I'll show you how easy it is to do that. And to bring out the detail, but also have, I just felt like, you know, of course, if you put black on there, it's not gonna show up as well, right? So I just felt like putting the eternal over it, it really brings out the detail in this little mold, right? So a couple things that I learned as I do den molds. We all know that when you do resin, Oh, let me tell you the other thing. Prima carries a modeling clay, and it's an air dry clay that you can use and you put them in your molds, then you take them out and you let them air dry. If I'm doing a piece that I want it to look crusty, I want it to look uh, old, I want it to maybe even have some cracks in it because it, you know, to kind of implement how old it is. I went today with my designer son. They're taking a nap. I'm doing my live. We walked all day, probably walked 12 miles today. Um, and we went to Round Top in Texas. That's why I came down to Texas. And this is where I'm at. I'm with my son. And uh, so, you know, when we were going through all of the antique things, you know, so many of the embellishments were 
you know, were cracked and, and you know, and but they were old antiques, you know, they were really cool, really cool pieces. We just had a blast. Um, Carrie, what kind of, she's asking what kind of resin do I use? Well, um, I use uh, a resin that is the fast type of resin. It probably takes it, you've only got about, a, um, I'm going to say a five minute, six minute a work time with it to pour it into your mold so you kind of have to work not fast fast but i mean you mix it up and once it gets clear you mix part a with part b and once it gets clear then you pour it into your mold but it'll take it about 10 minutes 12 minutes to set up and you know it's set up when it turns uh, white that's how you know when it's totally set up and you can kind of touch it and see um so i use a just a quick setting resin. There's also a long setting resin, which can take 24 hours to set up. If you, if you really need working time, that's what you would need to work with, but I've just got the molds, so, so it's just easy to do. So when you take the air dry molds, you just take them in, you push them in. I always use a, uh, like a hotel key. Every time I go to a hotel, I save the key. Uh, because you know what it makes it makes a great little spatula type thing because it's thin and then I can just take uh, the, the excess air dry off of the the mold and um, you know and then you just pop it out you let it dry uh, most of the time I feel like they don't crack but once in a while you'll get one that cracks well for me if I'm doing an old older piece to me that's not a big deal because I want it to look a little crusty I want it to look a little bit antique because whenever I do uh, whatever I'm going to do on top of it um, whether I'm using uh, paint and uh, doing a layering type look you know then then it kind of goes in line with that so let me show you a trick uh, if you guys are pouring your own resin. Now, you know that you mix uh, part A and part B. You know, you get the same exact amount. It says on there, do the exact same amount of part A and part B. Then when you mix them together, you get a chemical reaction. And that chemical reaction uh, you stir it and then it's white. It's just real white and then as you keep stirring it, it activates together, it mixes together and activates and then it turns clear and then that's when you know, okay, it's ready to pour into your mold. And so you pour it into your mold, you know, like this one. I don't know if you can see it real good. It's botanical bo uh, blossoms, but see all the florals that you get there? Um, if I'm doing a resin pour, I always do a few of my molds so they can, I can have them on hand because you guys, then you're not stopping when you're doing, I'm going to probably use this one. So since this was just so little, I brought, I brought a mold that I could go ahead and use the rest of my little cup and fill these up. And so you're kind of killing two birds with one stone and they keep forever. So it's not like, well, if, if I make them up, I can't use them later. Absolutely, you can use them later. Sometimes I'll just take a whole day or a whole three, four hours and just pour molds. And then I'll, you know, I'll put them in containers where I know what they are or whatever. So you can do your work ahead of time. And that really saves you time whenever you're in your creative mode. You don't have to mold. There you go. Uh, you don't have to stop and make molds because you're in your creative mode, you know. So anyway, so that's kind of what I do. And I keep already made molds uh, on hand and it makes it just so much easier. So we know that when you pour the resin, when you pour your resin, um, you do equal amounts. I'm trying to find one. Okay. Here's a good example. See, this one is, you know, I poured it last night. Oh, you're welcome, Lisa. I poured it last night and you can kind of see there's not a lot of work, uh, a leeway in that. 
So how in the world am I, am I going to get that? Can you see that? I'm pushing it. It is not going to make that curve. And if you've got curves, uh, I buy mine carry online and it's normally uh, roundabout. I get a gallon because I use a lot, you know? Uh, no, it's not sticky. Lisa, if you give it enough time, and it's sticky kind of on your hands, I would suggest to wear gloves because that, once you mix it together and you mix it right, you get the right components. Once it sets up, then it's, it's like this. It's, it's a solid. It's, it's not sticky at all. Um, but, you know, when you kind of get that on your hands, it, you know, so just wear gloves. That would be good. So you can see that is not going to make that curve, is it? And I don't know about you, but most of the time my pieces have a lot of curves on them and they've got a lot of detail on them. So I've learned a few tricks for that. Part A is, let's see, part A is called your casting resin. Uh, and part B, well, let me see. See, it doesn't really say, um, okay, so part A, you've got a part A, you've got a part B. Part A, you, you make to where it says for you to make it at. Now, I found these little bitty, they're little, and I, I know exactly how much to pour in. They're almost like little shot glasses or little votive cups or something. They give you a little cup whenever you buy it most of the time, but they're only about that big. Let me get it. Okay, so they're just very small. Look, so I would put part A right here and I would fill it not all the way up, but just almost all the way up. And then I would fill this part B. And then what I would do is I would take another small container and I would pour those into that, and then you stir it up until it becomes clear, and then that's when you pour it. Medicine cups work good, yeah. So anyhow, um, here's a tip, okay? So you put your part A exactly where you want it, you know, how much you're gonna use. Then your part B, if you put just a tad less on your hardener, part B is your hardener, it's what is gonna cause it to harden. So if I put just a tad less of my hardener, this is what you get. Um, now we saw this where it's pretty rigid, right? It's, it, which one was it? It's pretty rigid. It's not gonna make that curve, is it? So now, I think it was this one. It's very rigid. If I tried to make that curve, it's not gonna make it. There's two things we can do to remedy that. We can put a little less of the hardener, part B, in. And when I'm talking a little less, I'm talking like eensy time, you know, just like, just a little. And you can work with it. You know, work with one cup and or one type. And see, you don't wanna put too less in it because if you do that, then it's not gonna harden at all and you're gonna have a soupy mess. Then you're gonna have a sticky mess, Lisa. That's when you'll have a sticky mess. Hi, hi Deborah. Um, but if you do just a tad less of your hardener, look what you get. Look. Now I can easily take this and make that curve. Can you see that? I can easily make that curve. And so then I can glue this on and easily make the curve and it just makes it a lot easier. I think I'm gonna leave that right there because I know that's gonna work well here. Okay, so that is tip number one. Tip number two is when you are working, remember that hard piece that we had that isn't gonna make that curve? Okay, so I'm gonna get a heat gun and I'm gonna take this heat gun and I am going to just hold it, you know, I, I hold it about two, three inches away from it 
Um, and then it's got to heat that up. I'll show you in just a minute, Lisa. Thank you for asking. I'll show you what I use as a glue. Uh, everyone has their own favorite when it comes to a glue. And I normally heat it up on the back side, not on my painted side. And I'm just going to take time right now, just take the little time that I have to do. And you can just kind of feel, all of a sudden it's gonna become a little more malleable. And um, you can take that and use it on those curves. Um, takes it a couple minutes to heat that resin up to make it really curvy. Getting there. It's getting there. You don't want to hold your heat gun right up on it because it might scorch it a little bit, according to how hot your heat gun is. Okay, so you remember how that wouldn't bend. Now look at it. See? See? So now it's bendable, kind of like would you bend. Exactly. So here you go. Now we could not make that look work. And now look. We've just made this piece that was not malleable. We've made it malleable. So there's, like I said, there's two little tips. Now look, it's kind of staying in that way. And if I glued it right now, then what would happen is it would stay this way as the glue dried. Um, so it makes these molds, I think, totally usable in almost any situation that you have, you know? So I love this idea. So you ask what glue I used. I use, it's called Tight Bond, but I don't get the normal kind. It's called Quick and Thick. And that's exactly what it is. Let's apply this right now. So I'm gonna put a liberal amount, not too much, you don't want so much, but I, I, I kind of put a little more like on the ends because that's where your joints are. And so, and then I'll just get like a rag or something. And let me make sure you guys can see what I'm doing and let me bring you in just a little bit so I can make sure that you can see. It, whoops, sorry, you turned around, didn't you? Okay, so I am having prop issues with my, we were gone all day, and so my phone, oh, I'm sorry, you guys. My phone was, um, good gravy. My, gro my phone was going down, okay, so I had to plug it in. So look, I am going to do this one-handed because I know I can make you guys see. Now, this is the one, it's cooling down. It's cooling down, but I could still make it work. Now, once it's cool, this will go back to being uh, not malleable. So, hold on just a second, you guys. I am just having problems tonight. This thing, it's because my phone is hooked in, you guys. So it's causing this to want to tip. So I'm gonna to have to bring my little table over here. All right, so now normally what I would do is I would take tape and I'm at my son's house. So I asked, I forgot my tape and I said, do you have any tape? And they said, no. So that's not gonna work only because I don't have tape. Okay, so let's take this one and let me bring 